morning, everyone. Welcome to another Live with Blitzy, where we like to show you fun products and demos each Thursday. And if you are a paper crafter, you are going to love today's show because we are featuring top our top 10 paper crafting tools. So these are must-see tools that you're gonna want for your stash if you don't already have them. Um, I also have Emily over on chat who is available to answer any questions you may have about any of the products that we're demoing today. Or if you have any comments, questions, whatever, or if you just wanna give her compliments, which she loves, um, she will be available and will give us any questions or comments you guys have. So first, we're gonna check in with her and see who's joining us today. So hey, Emily. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, like, like Megan said, I will be able to help share links of the products that we're showing so that you can find them on our website, help answer any questions, throw questions over to our crafters as they're demoing today. I see, I know Katie's here, she's not in the studio with us today, but she is with us here, so hopefully she can help chat a little too. And yeah, I'm excited to see what they have to create for us today. All right. Yes, we are here with Megan, who is going to kick everything off. Mm -hmm. It looks like, what, four different uh, products? Three products. Three products. Yes. Okay, so what, what are you going to show us first? So the first thing I'm going to show you is the Rollaway from Ken Oliver. This thing is great for if you have detailed, intricate dyes that you just, like every time you use the die, I have an example here, the little pieces, they just get stuck so in there. So annoying, right? So Trying annoying. to get those out. It takes yes. forever to try and poke each one out. Yeah, and they have like the little holes for you to poke each thing out, but that takes so much time. So and Ken Oliver, time. I know, who has time for that? <laughs> so Ken Oliver came up with this genius invention, the roll away. It looks like this, and it's a roll, it's kind of similar to... Um, a lint roller? A lint roller, yeah. yeah. But it's a little bit more jelly, and you'll just roll it right over the die, and it picks what? up all of that paper. How cool is Look that? Look at how awesome that is. And to clean it, for the time being now, you can just pick it off, but to clean this, all you have to do is run it through the water, through a faucet, and it comes right off. And you can reuse this right after it's gone through yeah. the water. That's awesome. Yeah, and after it dries, after it goes through the water, mm -hmm. you can kind of feel the tackiness yeah. starting to come back. So yeah, That's after so you, cool. yeah, and it, it, look at that, it just yeah. comes right off. And I think he actually had this maybe at CHA this year. And I think when they were doing their demos, they just had like a bucket or like a bowl of water. So you mm -hmm. can even do that if you're working, oh, yeah. you know, kind of have a couple of the extra ones mm -hmm. on hand, dip them in the, the bucket just of water, kinda... clean it, and then mm -hmm. keep going about your, your die cutting. So yeah. love that product. And say you want to have multiple of the rollaways, they do make the refills so you oh, can perfect. kind of have extras nearby. And another great thing that this would be helpful with is say you're making a project that involves glitter. This Which gets most all over the place. Do right? <laughs> we're, we're typically grabbing for our glitter. So, say you get glitter all over your crafting area. Ugh, such a pain, right? Because yeah, it's and that will so get hard everywhere. To pick up, right? This will also pick up the glitter. What? Look at that! I did not know the glitter piece of it. Yes, look that at is how so awesome cool. that is. So this is such a great thing to have in your paper crafting stash. Look at how easy that is. This will make cleaning. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I didn't even think that, like, that that would mm -hmm. be something that you could use that way. And then same thing, run it through the water and this comes right off and then yeah. you use it again. And this is really fine glitter too. Yeah, it's so really fine. You really can even fine. see yeah. it in there. It's super Which fine. Which is the hardest kind to clean up when you're using, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. you get that on your table and you pretty much just know that it's going to be there, you know, yeah. forever. Forever. <laughs> how can you pick it up? Well, now you can grab the roll all the way to pick yes. up your glitter. Very cool. So great invention. Thank you, Ken Oliver, yes. for making this. <laughs> okay, so that's okay, one. So that is one. So what's number two? Number two is the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse Tool. And Are you just <clears throat> or are you? Um, no, this is fine. Okay. And if you caught our live, I believe that was on Friday. Was yes. that on Friday? It was Friday. I did a whole demoing of three different projects of using the fuse tool and so what they are, I made this shaker bookmark right here, and then you can also use it for um, creating layouts for in your I love pocket this, pages. By the way. Yeah, so all you do is you would like put in the sequins in there, you would seal it, and then insert your picture. So then that creates a sealed sequin pocket. So nothing's gonna fall out. Nothing's gonna fall out. So that was one of the projects that I made also, and then the banner here, same concept as the bookmark, 
but it's just in banner form. Look at how fun that is. I know, is. I love that you've incorporated this tool um, outside of card making and scrapbook layouts, and mm -hmm. you've used it to make party decor, which yeah. is really cool. And if you guys missed that one, I'll just show you a quick little yeah, demo so let's here see, to let's show. Let's see the Fuse tool in action, because this guy is really, really cool. Yeah, so here is the Fuse tool. So it looks like this, and it has this little wheel Almost right like here. Almost gear, right? Yeah, kind of. And you plug it in so it's really hot and you'll use it on page protectors so it kind of melts away when you go over it to create pockets. So at, right here I have a little pocket right here. I'm going to put some sequins in there. And like we said on Friday, you can use this for like if you're documenting a beach vacation, yeah. put sand in there. That would be a good so idea. So many fun things you can kind of toss in there and seal up without mm -hmm. worrying about it, you know, coming out. I love that. So I'll just put some sequins in there. And then to seal that off, so then you can insert a picture on top of that. You're going to use, and it also comes with this fancy tool I was right here. Ask if it, yeah. If, I know that this tool is available, but I wasn't sure if you got that separately or mm -hmm. if it came with it. But So it has a ruler on there for convenience and then there's also a little groove in there and that's what you're gonna go through when you make your seal so then you're just going to place that on top of there and then do just even amount of pressure you don't have to push too hard and you go over it like and then you have your little pocket nice and sealed yeah and make sure you also want to make sure that you're doing it over a mat so then this doesn't melt away your craft space. yes that <laughs> is a very good tip yes so that awesome. was Love number the two fuse. all right so that's that's the second one that was the second one and, and what now, is the third one number three is this cute invention right here okay it i is... have not used this before so i'm really excited to see this in action i know we've sold this obviously a ton but I've mm -hmm. not actually seen this demoed before. Yeah, so these are perfect for making mats around photos for card making, scrapbooking, anything like that to make mats around. Or even home decor, around. right? If you yeah, have a, you a frame could. That yeah. you want to, you know, or a picture that you want to add to a picture frame. Yeah, you so add here's a an mat. example. So you put your picture in, and then you use these to create the mats and borders around your pictures. That's really so cool. So just to do a quick I'm, I'm little. Really, and now I'm even more curious <laughs> because I'm looking at these flat kind of rulers here and thinking, mm -hmm. how are like you how going? How do they work? Yeah. So I cut down some paper here. We're going to do three layers. So the first layer, I'm going to do this color. Very and I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of my photo. So you're going to glue that to your first sheet of paper. Okay. All right. And then... So say I want to do, let's do a one eighth inch border around here. Okay. So you can see, you want to make sure there are four different borders on them. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the one that you're going to use is in the top right corner and that has a little groove in there. So then if you flip it over, this one would be the three eighths. So then you can, it goes, you read it right. So that's gotcha. the one that you're going to be doing. So this one, the one eighth, and you can see that they have little grooves oh, on yeah. each of the rulers. So that is what's going to go up against your photo. So I'm going to do the one eighth order, and it so has it a little lip. Forward. Okay. So yes. Your photo is kind of like clicks into mm -hmm. that. Okay. So it has like a little lip in there, so it catches mm -hmm. on the photo, and then you're going to use your craft knife to cut along, and then once again, you're going to want to use a mat. and no measuring needed it's super this is such a great tool to have you're speaking my language no <laughs> measuring yes. just lock it's, it in place yeah. and cut that's so cool that's so cool and just think of all of the fun you can have with this especially with you know, your pretty pattern scrapbook papers yeah. creating fun layouts or like i said even for your home decor mm -hmm. adding fun little mats and adding pops of colors to your photos so then That's if you're so wanting fun. to add another layer to that oh so then you take that you gotcha and then as you keep going you line up the little groove mm -hmm. to whichever border you just made. Gotcha. So, so the first one is the end. photo. Yeah. Gotcha. So then let's do a five eighths border. So then I'm going to line that up with 
let's not do five eighths. Let's do three eighths. Okay. okay. So then you're gonna line that up mm -hmm. with the blue. So that's the yep. last border we just did. And then you just cut. Same thing. So then as you're making more layers, you're gonna keep putting the groove yep. onto that border. So you can kind of see, so then it yeah. would look like this. And that you can make so, so many cool. layers. This is such a cool tool. And there's, I believe, how many layers? There's 10 different sizes wow. with these three. Just with these three pieces. Yeah. What I love about these two is that they're obviously flat, so when it comes to storing, you're not gonna have something yeah. bulky, but the fact mm -hmm. that you get 10 different sizes just with these three little kind of classic mm -hmm. rulers, and I'm sure you can, well, you can't use it as a ruler. You can use it just as a straight edge, straight edge for yeah. any sort of crafting projects. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, so I was really excited when I got yeah. to kind of work with this one. So this one is very, I definitely recommend having this in your crafting stash. Awesome. So. Well, let's kick it over to Emily and see if anyone has any questions about the three paper crafting products we just showed you guys and if they have any comments. So what's going on, Emily? Hey, so we definitely have some people that have some of these in their stash. Some people are seeing them for the first time. Um, a lot of comments on the Fuse tool. Some people were able to catch our demo earlier this week. If you weren't, make sure that you go to the videos section of our page so that you can catch up on that because Megan showed some great tips and tricks on using the Fuse and she shows you how to use it and make that banner and bookmark and a lot of really great, awesome shaker type crafts. Um, the perfect... Uh, the perfect paper crafting, perfect layers, that is something that I had never, I've never seen it demoed before either. We actually, I think I had a customer request on it a couple months ago and I didn't even know and we went to our creative team and they were like, oh, it's this and it's such like a great tool. A lot of people are like, why didn't I have this years ago? So I think people are going to be checking that one out for sure. It's going to be really helpful. Um, so yeah. All right, so let's see, that was... The so first that was three. three. So yeah. that was the fuse tool, the roll away, mm -hmm. and the perfect layer. So we're gonna have Megan go out and we're gonna have Claudia come in who's gonna show you what four? Four more paper crafting tools. So I'm gonna scoot on over here and let Claudia get set up. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I have the next yes. four. I'm excited. What, what are you so, gonna show us now? Okay, so uh, number four. Yes. Let's see, what should I show first? Okay. Let's the show, anticipation. Yeah, let's show the We Are uh, Quick Stick. Okay. So this little handy tool, um, it's another thing that's like great things come in small packages. Yeah. It's got three main functions. Um, so it pulls apart here like so. Ooh. So you can see that it's got a, a pointed tip on one end and then more of like a little chisel, kind of like a little mm -hmm. shovel tip on the other end so that you can switch those out. And then... This is an actual, um, this is a tacky uh, tip. Oh, yeah. And you can, it's, you can kind of like move it around if you need, yeah. you know, more, more. So let me show you um, what it does. Okay. I know, I'm like, what are these little tips for and what do they do? <clears throat> okay, so first of all, um, the little chisel tip is great for lifting stickers so if you want you don't want to get your finger uh, you know yeah. like you don't want to get you don't want to like peel up your yep, sticker onto correct. itself or right. damage it mm -hmm. you can use this to kind of get get your stickers started especially if they have like an intricate thing like mm -hmm. this um, so that's this little end cool and then if you so you can re release more of that um, oh, tacky substance. I thought by, it was just like a one, like a tip, but you can no, like it's, it's full of something. Right, it's got oh. like a little um, uh, screw top, gotcha, and yeah. so every time you screw it, mm -hmm. um, some of that little tacky stuff comes out. So let's say that cool. you want to glue some sequins onto a card. Which can be kind of a pain, right? Right, because you don't... <laughs> Trying to handle those with your, you know, your two fingers. Exactly. So you can just apply... Oh, that's too much glue. Let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> so you can apply a little dab of glue wherever you want your sequin. Mm -hmm. And then you use the tip of ah. this little quick stick. And you can see how it Yeah, it's holding down it nice for you. And then... Look at that! But it releases it yeah. so easily. So you're not struggling and, like, Holding the stone, and, you're not, and cool you're not getting your fingers. Exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. And then um, the little point 
second tip, if you're already a crafter, you kind of know this just has a lot of uses. You can use it to, um, if you have like a stubborn little piece on your mm -hmm. die that won't pop out, uh, you can use this to kind of, you know, break that, break that out. Or if you have um, like a hole, if you do hole punching and it's not perfect, yep. you can use this to poke that through. So it's just a really handy little tool yeah. that has three really cute, Cute, really cool main function. It is also very cute. <laughs> you know, we love our cute tools right yes. here. Um, you know, that it will help you in your paper crafting. So that's the very cool. first one. So that's number four. Okay. And so once again, that's the We Are Memory Keepers Quick Stick. Quick stick. Um, okay. So then next we have one of my favorites. And I'm like, what is she pulling out? Yes. <laughs> oh, I see what this is. The Martha Stewart scoreboard. Love this. So this handy little tool has um, a bone folder on it. Sorry, this one is actually brand new. There you go. So it's got a little um, scoreboard that snaps in place at the top so that you never lose it. I love that and function. then it's got um, all of the measurements, all the increments up top and on the side to help you, let's say you want to um, create like a fan, you know, a decorative yep. fan. This will help you create perfect score lines every time so you can see how you can yeah. score you can make your own cards I love that you can make your own cards because it even has what the different card measurements like the yes. PLR, A2. So, so you can see how it creates perfect little pleats um, but yes yeah, so let's say you want to make a four bar card um, you know you can just score that line mm -hmm. and then cut it and it also has on the back I actually sure. did not know this existed. Yes. In the back. <laughs> it also has Look on the back um, all of the sizes for standard cards, and then it'll tell you um, what paper size to start with and where to fold it at, so oh that gosh. you can do. That's all the uh, kind of uh, basic ones, and then it also shows you how to do envelopes. So when you flip it over, um, you can line it up with whatever envelope size you want, and it's got all of the lines and measurements for you, so that you can score those lines. How did I not know yes. that this <laughs> back had all this information? Yeah. <laughs> I need to flip it over. That's so cool. Yeah. Especially if you are a card maker and you want to make custom cards and do colors and whatnot, that's a perfect tool yes. for that. And we have that in. Oh, I see. Yes. The mother version? Yes. This is the baby version? <laughs> we have um, it in the large size as well. So if you're working on scrapbook layouts or something that's a larger format, yeah. this works great with it. This has a little, um, oh, wow. yeah. little compartment thing that opens up and you can put your bone folder in there and it also has the card measurements on there as well and then this little that move. piece moves so that you can use it to create envelopes so it's basically this little guy yep. just um, a little bit larger just a little larger it's kind of so this one your little um, oh nice your little fits envelope in yeah fits in here you can put your little guide in there too so everything's Stores All within stores within itself. It's compact. Um, Is there efficient. anything fun on the back of this one? No, because no. <laughs> nothing fun on the back okay. of this one. Because just tracking. <laughs> <That's tracking>. Just <laughs> FYI, <laughs> um, because you get this little yep. um, piece. So that's what you're going to line up to score your envelope lines. Very so those cool. are the Martha Stewart scoreboards. All right. So that's what. Four and five. Four and five. So now. Do so you want to see if we do? We have any questions? Yeah, or we anything? can kick it over to Emily. Um, well, I think you just blew a lot of people's minds, including mine, when you flipped that scoreboard over and showed the thing on the back. I actually compared it to like a national treasure when they Nicolas Cage is like, there's a map on the back of the Declaration of Independence, because if I don't get a national treasure reference in once a day, what have I done? But um, people like the small one, they like the large one. I think it just depends on you know the size that you're working with and in your craft room. Also on the quick stick, it sounds like a lot of people, a couple already have that in their craft room and it's really, really handy for them. They use it for stickers. Uh, Lori B was just using it for sequins. It helps keep you a little less sticky. So great tools to pick up. All right, awesome. All right we're back. Yes. yes. So we have, I have two more to show you. Okay. Um, so number six is this handy little piece of adhesive, double-sided adhesive plastic from Little B. It's called the Perfect Positioner, and it makes die cutting um, any kind of dies that kind of sit 
into fit yep. into one mm -hmm. another. It makes it so much easier. And what's really great is that it's so thin that depending on whatever um, platform you have, you can cut it down. So for example, like I have a smaller yep. um, Sizzix platform, so I can just cut this down to size, and it's got measurements on there for you. Um, you just want to you just want to peel one side up. You could also use your little tool, too, huh? There you go. <laughs> Bringing it full circle. That's right. That's right. Full circle. Full circle. Um, okay, so you can ha so you have your little platform here, so you're just going to stick this down like so, and then you're going to peel up the other side, which I don't have So nails. is the other side sticky as well? Yes. And I don't even like do yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so you're going to... Get this out of the way. So you're gonna peel up the other side, and let's say you have, for example, I have these two dies, and I want the bird to sit in the frame. Okay. So you're gonna just line this up like so, and you can see that yeah, it's sticky. It's sticky. So, and then I I want my bird to fit in there. Without shifting, without having to use tape. Yeah, um, look at that. It's held in place perfectly so that then I can take my piece of paper. I know it's always the worry that did I tape it down right? Yes. <laughs> did it shift when did I was it putting shift? the tape on? It's it? great for, it's actually, uh, my favorite use for this would be to uh, lay out type. It's actually really oh, great to yeah. put type down. That's a really good point. So then you just put your paper on top. And do you know how many uses you can get from the sticky um, Is it quite I a few? I, I imagine it's probably quite yeah, a few. Yeah, right? it's quite a few, but what's good is that they, um, you know, you can replace yep. it. Yeah, so when you're when it starts to lose its tacky, yes. you just peel it off and grab another one. I'm excited to see this. Yeah, I know. I've struggled so many times where I, th I thought my die was straight, and then I pull off, and I'm like, oh, and you're like, no, we're shifted. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, I think my biggest pet peeve is that when letters get all wonky. Yes. And then you're like, well, I guess I'll just make everything look all wonky. Right. <laughs> it's, it's decorative. We're just yeah. being creative here, right? So now you can see that look it at that. created so cool. perfectly aligned yeah. um, die cuts. And this is also good, too, especially if you have, like, that one piece of scrap paper that you've kind of been hoarding for the perfect project. So if you really have yes. no room for error, you need to nail it. Otherwise... You have to exactly, come to that's a really yeah. good point. You will never mess up that last piece of gorgeous paper that you've been hoarding. No worries, right? No worries. All right, so love yeah, that. So this is a, another little, little t essential tool yeah. that you didn't know you needed. But now you do. Right? <laughs> exactly. I know, like all these things you see now, you're like, okay, wait a minute, I don't have that, but darn it, now I need it. Um, okay, so we are up to number seven. seven. Yes. Okay, so this thing. I keep looking here like, what does she have in her yes. here? What's going on? This thing, I will admit that I avoided using it for a really long time because it's very intimidating. Um, it, as have I, because I think we've had this <laughs> literally for three years, and everyone's kind of like, I'm just going to, nope, not, not today. Yep, and this would have been amazing. I used to do book binding way, way long time ago, and this would have been such a handy little tool <laughs> to have because I used to have the old school eyelet setter with mm -hmm, the gold hammer, hand. and it's like making loud noise and... People are like, what are you doing? It's repetitive and annoying. Um, so this kind of totally takes care of that problem. So this is the Crocodile from uh, We Are Memory Keepers. And it's got, um, so let me walk you through the functions really quick. So it's got on both sides, um, 1 8 and 3 16 inch hole punches. And what's nice is that it's got centimeters on one side and inch on the other. And you can move this little guy back and forth. So let's say I want to punch my holes at, um, you know, half an inch. So I'll move this little guy, whoop, move it over like so. So that every time you punch, you're going to get a perfectly oh, cool. spaced punch each time. So they're going to punch in line perfectly for you. That's yeah, that's it. This is like a, a chipboard. Yeah. So you can, this actually goes through leather. Um, so it's great also if you, if you have a belt in your closet yes. that doesn't fit, just take out your crocodile and punch another hole. If it's too big, right? Yes, not right. too small. Exactly. If it's too big. Um, so 
it come it comes in handy. That's a lot. really cool. Also for like jewelry making, if you do any kind of leather jewelry yeah. or that kind of thing. And it's pretty too. It's so pretty. <laughs> so once you have your um, holes punched, then um, you want to take a look here. It's got uh, two two different ends. One is the base, and the other is the top. Um, that's going to cinch down on your grommet or your eyelet. And this little guy rotates. So oh. it comes with a chart that tells you which size, which number, because they're all numbered. So if you have this kind of grommet, you use this number. If you have this kind, oh, cool. you know, so if... I did not see, I didn't know that, but... Yeah, so, like it, that. so it tells you what you need to use. And then this guy does the same thing. This one flips over to one eighth or three sixteenths. Like so. So let me just make sure I'm back on the... Just keep on spinning. Right number. Okay. So you want to have obviously the base on the bottom when you're doing this. And I just have regular three sixteenths um, eyelet there. And you're going to You've already had you. You have your pre-punched hole, and actually, no, that's right. Then you just line it up with the crocodile, and you squeeze, and it has perfectly. Look at that! Now I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay, what do I need? I need this for something, yes. right? God, yes. That's so cool. So, like I said, it's awesome for. Um, Little little booklets or yeah. journals. It's also great for hang tags if you want to make your own hang tags. Yeah. For uh, I always like to incorporate the holidays because I'm like, how can I use these craft yes. tools on the holidays? If you're doing um, you know custom hang uh, hang tags, this is great. Um, so yeah, it's a really handy little tool. And then it's got uh, lastly just one little cute function that makes it um, even more space uh, efficient is you can actually lock it, and so then. Look at that. Yeah. Smaller footprint Small, for your drawers so or cool. classroom. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. So much fun. So let's do a quick recap. So we had the quick stick, right? We had the quick stick. Quick stick. Martha scoreboard. Scoreboard. The little bee perfect positioner and the crocodile. crocodile. So we are now up to seven. So yes. we showed you seven paper crafting tools that are a must. And before yes. I get into the final three here, we're going to kick it over to Emily to see if there are any additional questions. Yeah, it sounds like, so some people do have the crocodile in their stash. Some of them were a little braver trying it out than we were. Lori B says she doesn't think she's made a masculine card without grommets in like five years. There are a couple questions both on the crocodile and the positioner for the crocodile. Um, can you go over again how you got the holes like spaced out perfectly? And then on the positioner, um, what's the width of it? And also, how do you store it with like the sticky, or does it kind of self-adhere? Okay. So for the perfect positioner, I actually just used the um, plastic cling that was on it for storing. So it's gonna the bottom kind of just stays there because yeah. they assume you're gonna use it until it's no longer tacky, and then you can replace it. But I just. Just like you would, like, if anybody does any kind of die, uh, die cutting machines, like the electronic cutting tools, like Silhouette, you know, you want to just cover your mat to maintain the stickiness. So that's how and that works. I imagine works. if you wanted to peel it off, just say that other, the bottom piece, you can peel it off from your platform and then stick it back on. Right, if, so. you, if you really don't want yeah. to have, keep it on there permanently. Um, and then the measurements are, I believe this goes all, so this is 12 inches by, it's like, what, six? Six. Seven? Yeah, so 12 by six. So, it, like we said, if you have like a square platform or a smaller um, platform, then you can cut it down to size. But yes, the whole length of it is 6 by 12. So that's that. And then for the crocodile, um, so you have your hole punches on the sides here. And you have inches on one side and you have centimeters on the other side. So whatever you feel comfortable using. For your measurements and then all you do is move this little guy down to whatever inch you need so it's going to space it you're going to punch holes like this so it's going to space it from the end from the edge so if you i had it at half an inch if you want to do holes an inch into your project then you could you would do the same thing so i just moved it down so you're going to see now that 
So what are you aligning it with? So I'm just, I'm just spacing it out. So so this, you're just kind of eyeing. You're just yeah, that I'm just eyeing just gotcha. to show you gotcha. what it does along the edge. But it, gotcha. it's going to punch it perfectly, the same measurement in from gotcha. the edge of your project. So if you time. wanted these evenly spaced, you probably need to get a ruler's kind of mark where you want yeah, it. Yeah, just, just do gotcha. a little, like you could do like a little, you know, faint line or a little yep. faint dot and just gotcha. go But no matter what, from the edge to here will always be. Will always be gotcha. even. Yep. Gotcha. All right, well, if there are no more questions, I'm going to continue on with number seven um, of the top ten. Yes. So I'm going to start. Which is a, a um, <laughs> go ahead, I'll let yes. you do your thing. <laughs> this is one of our favorite ones yes. here. It's we get so excited. So exciting with the craft sure. mat. So I'm sure, well, hopefully most of you have seen this. If not, you're in for a real treat. So this <laughs> is the Ken Oliver craft mat, which if you've never seen this before, you're probably thinking, okay, girl, what are you talking about? This is just a gray like rubber piece of, what is this? No what is this? What you is don't this? need this. So this craft mat is great because it's going to protect your space when you're working with different sprays, even paint. So I just have a little spritz here. So let's say I'm working on a car and I'm spraying on my mat, I'm getting it all yucky. It's protecting my surface, but then it easily wipes up when you're done. So you take it, you know, if, if you let your, your inks dry for a little bit, or even if you use acrylic paint and you let them dry, you can run it under water and this will come clean. And I don't know if Ken Oliver is on the chat today, but I know he even puts these in, I think it is his washing machine, right? Or yes. His washing machine. Washing machine or dishwasher? I think, washing it's, I think it's washing machine. Yes. So he'll take these and even put them in his washing machine to clean them. So like I said, these are great um, to protect your surface um, if you're working with like I said, your sprays, any of your paints. You were, seeing, you were seeing acrylic paint. I've actually been guilty of this. I've let the acrylic paint just dry there I and guess. it actually peels up yes so it actually kind of is an easier cleanup if you let it dry because mm -hmm. the, the surface of yep. this mat makes n nothing sticks to it exactly so. and it's great because you can actually use it with some of your heat products so I don't know if you can see here I actually already squirted a little bit of hot glue on my mat so if you're working with your hot glue and working into your fuse project, tool or your fuse tool this is just going to peel right off and I've actually ironed right on here so I yeah. needed a small um, piece of fabric Iron. I put it around here, put my iron on. It was a really quick kind of little doodad, but you can use it up to 400, I think it went 400 degrees. So if you are a person that works with clay, you can put this in your oven. So line your cookie sheet with the craft mat, put your clay on top of it, and bake your clay. So you can also use it that. And then it's really durable, so you can crumble this up if you're like me and you're not very organized <laughs> and you're like, I'm done making my project for the day. Crumble it and shove it in a drawer. When you take it out, it's going to regain that nice flat shape unlike some of the other um, craft mats on the market you can see this yes. is nice and flat and it's it's durable and it's skid resistant so look at it it's not so it's not back moving. to like if you're working with jewelry yes. um, or like clay your mm -hmm. clay project is not going to slip in the oven no so if you do which I've done before I've worked my, my little round beads here and they roll all oh. over and you're like it's fine I have plenty more somewhere on the ground we'll find I'll them, them later I'll get them later so if you want to like you can see you're like they just kind of stop. As I kind of throw them on my mat, they stop in their tracks. So you're not going to worry about them rolling off your workspace. This is tacky enough that it will hold them right in place. So no more missing beads, especially if you only have a certain amount for a project that you can't lose. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it because they'll stay in place. Um, let's see what else do we have here. It's heat resist, uh, heat resistant. So yeah. There's this one, which is a smaller one, and then there's also the extra large one, which would pretty much cover Cut almost this surface. entire table. So depending on you know the type of craft projects you do, if you're you know smaller projects where you don't need the entire craft table one, this might be for you. But if you are someone that is constantly over spraying or <laughs> um, making little kind of messes here and there, you're going to want the extra large because it's perfect for covering your entire surface. So. That is number seven. I don't know if I should kick it over to Emily and see if there's any questions before we move on. Emily? Um, it sounds like a lot of people have this craft mat. Carissa says she needs two more because she got the greatest the bigger one and gave them to her kids, but now the boys need them. So a whole craft mat family. Katie did point out um, it's okay with glitter and embossing powder. It'll kind of stick on there. It will come off eventually, but it's maybe not as easy as um, your paint and then I just wanted to mention don't cut on this we have it is not self-healing but you can use your fuse tool on it like Megan said with the heat it 
can get hot and the fuse tool isn't gonna run through and cut it. So a couple more uses. Yeah, it's very important to not cut on yes. it because it is not a cutting mat. No, it is, it'll cut right through. Yeah, it's like you, butter. <laughs> and then you'll be sad when you now have a cut in your mat. But yes, to Emily's point, if you do use glitter and you get on here, it is sticky, but you Yeah, I've actually I was gonna it, yeah. say I've actually just a tiny little dab of dish soap mm -hmm. will the glitter just slides right off yeah. if you just run it under the faucet. Yeah. So it's 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 it, that's the purpose of it that you want it to stick so you yeah. need a little water um yeah. to get it off but, but it yeah. cleans right up and we wouldn't recommend like you know we showed earlier like dumping glitter <laughs> it's like if for some reason it's in distant or you know kind of gets glitter sucked up because obviously we have glitter everywhere in our craft rooms it's going to come right up so yeah. all right so moving right along this here is the scrap perfect no clog tip and there are three different sizes it comes in small medium and large and what's great about this guy is you can actually use it on your paints, whoops, your paints, and um, your glossy accents, your stickles, even craft glue. So anything that you want to add a fine tip or you want to do fine detail with it, you put this little guy on, and this is just a Martha Stewart um, acrylic paint bottle here that I've added the Scrap Perfect um, no clog point or no clog tip to, and I've screwed it on, and you can see there's that tip there. And the way that you get the no clogs is that the cap has this kind of small needle on it. So every time you're done, you put that right inside and you push it down and it's once you screw it down, it's going to prevent any paint, glue, etc. from drying. That's so amazing. every time you go to use it, it's gonna be nice and clear. So I just wanna quickly show no you. No more reaching for like a pin or a needle oh my gosh, while you're right? working. Like, and that's, ah, it's clogged. Right, and that's essentially what this is. That every time you use it, you're basically putting that pin into the tip so you're not gonna have to Get your pen and yes. do it. So, um, just to kind of show you here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of. Let me get this started. If I can get it started. There we go. Um, I can add a little bit of paint detail to my flowers there. So, obviously, if, if I was just trying to do the paintbrush, it'd be kind of a pain in the butt. But I'm able to actually add little fine touches of color into those flowers which that is amazing right so you could use this to write so if you and you're also not wasting paint because no. if you're using a paintbrush exactly you have to squirt some paint out exactly and then you're gonna like ah, i over squirted the paint no, out exactly yeah, you're just tossing it exactly but. or if you want to do script you want to write with this on ribbon or fabric and you can also use this with different fabric paints so lots of really cool ways um to add these tips and kind of transform your bottles of paint or whatever you have yeah. into fine detailer. So that is also a must, the Scrap Perfect no clog writing tips. Um, so that's a nine, right? Nine, nine. Yes. okay. So number 10, I'm gonna move this out of the way, is dun, 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 the bow it all. <laughs> so the tried and true classic. The tried and true <laughs> classic. So I actually got my hands on this a few years ago and I'm like, what is this tool? And then once I played with it, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, you need this, especially if you love making bows, because this is going to help you get a perfect bow every single time. So it comes in this little handy-dandy carrying case. And on the sides of the board are these little holes, and that's where the pegs um, are actually stored. So they store right inside of the board. And then it comes with two little foam pieces here. I like to call these little Pac-Mans. Um, and it has, you can see there, but the little metal piece swings out. You throw on one of the pegs, this goes down, and then you add a little plastic tube here, and your spool of ribbon sits right on top of that. So that's kind of the setup for and the bow. And then you're all prepped, and you have everything at All ready to go. It also comes with a wrench, so if you see here, you can use your wrench, because I just kind of screwed these in. You can use your wrench to actually tighten those to make sure they're nice and tight. Um, and it comes with a little pair of scissors, so you don't have to worry about is. having your scissors. You just grab your scissors, make your bow, trim it, good to go. Um, this is the version 2.0, which allows you to create the triple loop bow. So I'm going to show you the triple loop bow. So I'm going to the start triple the loop. triple loop bow. <laughs> so I'm going to take my ribbon here. I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a tail, and then I'm going to begin to wrap. So I'm going to wrap it around that first peg, go over to the left, wrap it around that one. Come back around. So you can see I'm kind of creating a little bit of a zigzag there. And I'm gonna go behind my front two, around, behind. So you can see hopefully from a top, oops, I skipped this guy. I'm creating a little zigzag. And this is what's gonna give you the loops of your bow. So you can kind of see there the zigzag action happening. So then I take my front ribbon and my back and I'm going to kind of 
whoops, I'm going to cross them. So I'm crossing them, and I'm just gonna turn this over really quick so you guys can see. I've created the front of my bow. And I love how it's just perfectly spaced right? loops. Like you perfectly to... spaced loops. And then all I'm gonna do is kind of pull that tight. I'm going to tie a knot here, and then do another knot to get it nice and tight. They call it like the locking D. And you pull that tight, whoops, and then you trim your ends however long you want them, and then you slide your bow up, and you Look have a perfect triple, you can give it a little zhuzh there to kind of puff it up a little, a triple loop bow. How That's fun perfect. is that? So you can add this to your, you know, any packages, you can add it to, you know, if you have like a headband, you can add it to a bow right. or a bow to a headband. And what's also great about this is that it makes bows, let's see, what is it, up to, or as small as a half inch or as large as 10 inches. So the possibilities for making so bows is So you can put a little bow on your uh, card or yes. your scrapbooking. Yes, and I'm going to show you just a really simple little um, bow here because obviously you mentioned, you know, your, your cards, your scrapbooking. You want little tiny bows, but oh gosh, when you're trying to kind of fumble with those and make the small bow, you're like, Trying to tie it a little tight, and it never is perfect, right? Well, with this, I'm going to show you with actually um, baker twine. I'm going to take my baker twine, and I've separated these a half inch apart. Take my baker twine, and this is a really simple single loop bow. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to wrap it, start behind again, wrap it behind that left, and then do my kind of crossover, and then tie a knot in the back to get my, if I could grab that. My fingers are too chubby to fit through the half inch there. Um, then I'm just going to tie a knot again, and I'm going to show you my perfect little tiny bow that took, like, what, two seconds? Look how yes. tiny that bow is. And there's no pulling and adjusting. No. Adjusting, you have to tie, you know, no. tighten the knot. Exactly. So then, you know, you trim your little tails there, and then you can add it some adhesive to a card or whatever. So this is so perfect cute. for all of your card making. And I know I've played around with this before and I've used it with um, obviously Baker's twine. I've used it with raffia. Yeah. I've used it even with metal wire. Yarn. Yarn. Um, oh yeah, even, I remember the metal wire. Yeah, the yeah. metal wire and even um, uh, like hemp twine. So yeah. lots of different materials you can use with this to create perfect bows every time. So like I said, triple loop bow, single loop bow, you can do double loop bows. And these are lots expensive. Of, yes, like if you right? go out to the store and mm -hmm. try to buy like a bowl for a special mm -hmm. gift, it's like a seven, eight dollar right? bowl. It's great that you save money and also yeah. it's great um, that it's so sturdy that if you want to set it up for like a uh, assembly line, you know, yep. like multiple. Yes, for the holidays. Yeah. And one thing to point out too is that it does have um, a ruler built in here so you can use it to measure oh, if you need to. And this they is thought also, of everything. Yeah, and this is a nice little kind of foam pad that um, you can kind of work on. It's a little soft surface here. Um, so yeah, lots of things within the bow at all. You can just grab your favorite ribbon or twine or whatever, grab your little bag with your bow at all in it, and you are good to go to start cranking out some serious bows. So <laughs> awesome. That gives us number 10 yes. um, for our top 10 paper crafting products. Oh, before we leave you guys, I'm going to kick it over to Emily for one more time to see if you guys have any questions about the bow at all. We made it! We made it through our top 10 paper crafting tools. Hopefully you guys found some great stuff that you are going to be adding to your stash or new ways to use things that you already have. I know on the bow at all, people were really excited. We showed products last week, the punch boards that one of them made the bow, and that was what a lot of people were waiting to see. Um, sounds like the bow at all is already in Eva's cart, and she had said, I hope it comes with detailed instructions, and it does, Lori B said, and she also pointed out that a lot of great videos on YouTube. We've got a lot of great videos. Um, I know we've got some on the bow at all and then other craft projects, so make sure that you visit our YouTube channel and check all those out if you ever have a question about how to use something or if you want to see us work with something or find out how to use it, we are happy to be your craft testers for you. So let us know also what you want to see in the future from us. Well, thank you guys so thank much you. for joining us. Hopefully, like Emily said, you guys found um, some nifty new products that you need uh, for your stash. We have plenty of other products in the event, um, the paper crafting event, yes. that are also awesome. These are just the top 10 that we chose to show you guys. So make sure you check out the whole event, and we will see all of you back here next time. I think tomorrow, actually, we're doing another um, Live with Blitzy, so we'll be here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central. Yes. So until then, Bye. see you later.